Time for an unboxing. This is the Recon M1 Caliber. I may have butchered that, don't know. But it is a measuring device for your chop saw, your miter saw. I haven't got to open it yet. So here's a nice little styrofoam. Oh. Should we look at that? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say batteries not included. Everyone always loves this part. Hey, what do you know? Battery's not included. All right, so we got the battery compartment on the side. Got these two little clips that set in and then screw it closed. Now, like many tools, oh look, there's another one. Weep, weep. That's the sound that plastic makes when you tear it off. I'm not always one for instructions. Sometimes it's fun to just be like, let's grab this and start using it. However, this is a tool with a little more um, complication requiring calibration. So I'm gonna read over the instructions real quick and then I'll break it down for you guys. Setup will require two things, your miter saw and an eight foot board because you're gonna have to calibrate it. Here, let's lock you up and let's bring it back just a little. All right, now the next part is to calibrate it. I want to make two identical five inch pieces. So we're gonna get this up. Zero material lightly by pressing the material on the left edge of the blade. Select the zero button to set position. Negative value blade width is displayed. touch anything. Now this was the first test and I may have done it wrong, but here's the glorious moment of truth. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. God damn that is that is pretty good. Ensure it's zeroed each time a new measurement is begun. Every time you look you can see which is kind of cool it just I bumped the, the saw and it pulled away from the blade. So I think that's also why it's a good idea to zero it every time. So we're gonna go ahead, hit zero, and we're gonna bring it over. Okay, so we've got this thing right here. It's sensitive enough that even just if the board isn't flat, it's gonna make a difference. We're gonna aim for a center five inch cut both times. Right there, now there's center five. Look at that. That is impressive by all accounts. I would have a hard time replicating two five inch cuts this close together on the first pass. Let's see how they stack up. Do some calipers. That's five and one, one twenty-eighth. That's five and one sixty-fourth. I'm giving that a pretty good squeeze, trying to keep it as even and centered as I can. Oh, there we go, five and one twenty-eight. That was crooked. We're gonna do a, a little, a little test here. I'm gonna rip the rest of these <coughs> into five-inch sections. This whole board. 
just for the sake of showing you how long it's going to take. I've got 75 inches left on this board. I want to cut them all. I'm going to cut the rest of it down to five inches. Minutes, 10, seconds. 10, 11, 12, 13 pieces. Making sure that the bottoms are clean is actually making a difference. What's the verdict on these? These are all pretty much the same. I've got one or two that are off by maybe a 64th in total. I got me 13 pieces that were pretty identical and I didn't have to set anything up. So, not bad. All right, let's talk about uh, how this went right out of the box, and I'll give you an update in a few months after I've had more time to use it, but I, I'm impressed, on, honestly. Packaging, it was okay. I mean, it was styrofoam cardboard, but I mean, I don't care about the package. I care about this. Setup was real easy, it clamped on real nice. It came with a single sheet of instructions. Reading it is a must. This isn't one of those tools that you can just pick up and use. You need to know how to use it. My first two cuts were a little off. They weren't off by much. It was still an impressive close cut. And I realized that my setup was off a fraction. So I got my cut, uh, chop saw dialed in. Once I did that, and I took the time to pay attention to where I was cutting, I created, without measurement, two identical pieces. Identical. They both came out at five and one one twenty eighth. I was aiming for five, but to be off by a hundred and twenty eighth of an inch, that is a tolerance that I am so okay with. My initial intent for this was to use it as a rough cut guide so that I didn't have to measure all my rough cuts. You know, I'm, I'm making something, I need a bunch of pieces at, you know, 47 inches, give or take. It, was, it didn't need to be accurate, so I can just put it in there, roll it along, 47, and I can make sure that they're all coming out pretty close. Seeing how accurate that was, I, I'm like, I was literally, like, I wasn't expecting dead on accuracy like this. I might start using this for more finish work. You could make the argument that, you know, oh, it's easy to just pull a piece of tape and mark a line and cut it. I gotcha. That is probably faster to an extent that you can do it quicker. Repeatability with accuracy, I would argue that this is actually faster. Yes, there, there is a little bit of additional work, as in you have to drop the blade down, you have to come in from the outside, scoot your material in, touch the blade, zero it, then run your material versus just coming up with your piece in the middle and being like, here it is, I'm gonna cut to this side of the line and then chop it. To be able to reproduce, accuracy beats speed every time. I'm gonna give like a egregiously over the top example. You've got 10 boards you have to cut. You can cut them in five minutes doing it with a pencil, and they're gonna make a box. Or you could take 10 minutes and cut it with this. Even at twice the amount of time, your box will look more than twice as good. Because everything is going to be so dialed in, you're gonna have no gaps, you're gonna have no errors, you're gonna have no discrepancies. It also gets you to slow down and pay attention to what you're doing. Here's the other thing, it's real easy to pull a mark and mark it wrong. There's no guessing what your measurement is here because it's going to be the same on the screen. It's going to show you every cut. I'm impressed. I didn't think it was gonna be as spot on as this was. I paid, I paid a hundred bucks for it. They retail now around 130 to 150 um, and I know that they might they might be on back order just a little because they're just now sending out to the, the donors. Chop saw has always been one of those tools that like is a great tool, but if you want a consistent uh, cross cut, it's almost better to you know go to the table saw, get out a cross cut sled, set up a stop, 
and then you can make a very accurate cut because the accuracy is the important part. I kind of like the idea that I don't have to do that anymore. My initial impressions, setup was easy, instructions were clear, use and practicality were both pretty much on point. I would recommend it at this point. Um, I haven't had enough time with it to be like, yes, this is fantastic long term. Um, but my initial impressions are that it's a very accurate measuring tool to really step up the capacity and ability of your chop saw. So um, I will be posting a video later on after I've done some more work and really getting into the nitty gritty of what about it makes it worth buying. If you like this video or you want to see more tool reviews of stuff I have or pick up, let me know. Uh, let me know what you think about the tool in the comments below. I'm curious to see what you guys think about it. It's, this has been a product in the woodworking community, as far as I've seen, that has polarized a lot of people being like, this is ridiculous versus this is fantastic. So let me know what you think down below and um, see you on the next one.